Hey there, crew. It's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today as I set up my 2023 bullet journal. I'm extremely excited about it this year versus last year because I've accepted the minimalist approach that I take. This bullet journal setup is going to focus a lot on functionality and things that I need from it versus just a bunch of like really crazy cool looking things. We'll probably do that at some point in the future, just not today. So what we'll be doing is going through a little bit of an exercise that I set up for myself to choose this planner system. Also listing out the pages that are going to be migrating from one bullet journal to the next is usually the hardest part of migrating between notebooks because what do I keep? What comes with me? What doesn't? We're going to talk and figure that all out together as well as set up this journal. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> I'm a firm believer of finding the right system or planner for what you need out of it instead of trying to force yourself into something that might not work. So an easy thing that I like to do is just create a new collection page for myself, flip to a new page, get a scrap piece of paper, whatever that might be, and create three columns for myself. The first is going to be what I want, the second is going to be what I need, and the third column or row is going to be what I don't want. Underneath my wants, I wanted an easy way to look ahead at what was coming up, whether it be dates or events, projects that were due, something like that. I also needed easy at a glance dates so I could easily flip a page, look at what I needed and find exactly what I needed to get done or something that was coming up as well. I want my notebook not to ghost or bleed through, especially when I'm using certain pens. I'm a big fan of pens. I love ink pens, fountain pens, and I want something that's going to be able to handle that. I also really wanted to find a way to focus on work. It's been a little bit of a struggle for me recently, so I knew that I wanted something that I could really focus in on and get my work productivity in line. Underneath my needs, these are things I like I have to have is I have to have nice thick paper again to be able to handle my stamps and my pens and the fun stuff that I like to include inside of my bullet journal. It is a personal goal of mine to continue to be creative in my approach. So I absolutely need something that can help me do that. I mentioned that I need calendar pages for work. So that was a really important part for me this year and a real big focus. So that is why it falls underneath the needs. I also need to make sure that whatever notebook or planner system that I'm using has plenty of space for notes. I write down a lot of notes for work. I have specific collection pages, so whatever I'm using needs to be able to handle those. Some of the things that I have under don't want were too many planners. It is easy to get caught up in too many notebooks and a planner for every single idea. I know that I needed a focus for home and I need a focus for work and I need to find something that can do both of those for me without having several different planners to do so. I also know this from experience that disc planners and ring planners uh, just don't really work out for me. As a lefty, it's really hard for me to work inside of those notebooks. So I need to make sure that I'm finding planners and notebooks that work for me. So after taking all of that down and really understanding what I wanted, this is why I decided to work with the bullet journal itself. This specifically has a lot of what I need inside of it. We're going to go through it as we set it up, but page numbers, indexes, the bullet journal method as a whole, I love and find extremely helpful for me. This also has good paper. It can handle a lot of the ink that I need and the future log can help with at a glance dates, things like that, and also keeping those collection pages together. However, it doesn't cover everything for me that I needed or that I wanted. And that's why I'm also including the task planner. The task planner has dedicated spaces for work notes for work tasks. It has a weekly overview, calendar pages. And if I'm really just utilizing this for work, I think that I'm going to be very successful in getting things together and focused the way that I want. As a part of this exercise, I also focus on what I'm taking with me from my bullet journal and what I'm leaving behind. So this year, what I'm going to be taking with me are my one-on-ones, my pages that I have dedicated to those spaces. Those are a go-to note spot for me, especially when I'm meeting with my boss or other people inside of my community. I have a goals page that I really like, and I'm going to keep that and bring that along with me as well this year. It's always helpful to keep that in the front of my notebook, so I'm always seen as I'm flipping through. I have a program that I run at work for Lunch and Learns. I like having a dedicated space for that, so that's coming with me as well. I have my Instagram and my YouTube trackers. I love those things. They're super fun to track through. I love the data and the analytics that I get to pull and take a flip through and look at that, and I also really enjoy celebrating those little wins. I also have a help desk tracker. I'm always on the phone with help desk, whether I'm onboarding 
onboarding somebody new or something's wrong with the computer or I need to order something. And having a singular page for that has been really helpful for me this year. So it's absolutely coming with me. And the last thing and the first thing that will be setting up inside of my bullet journal is going to be my grid spacing cheat sheet. I use that every single week for my plan with me's. It's a really easy way to check out kind of my spacing on my pages. The bullet journal notebook does have that, but I'm not the biggest fan of the way that it's set up. So I'm going to create one for myself. The things that I'm not going to bring with me into my bullet journal are going to be dedicated pages for some of my reoccurring project meetings. And I also have a weekly capacity planner that I've been keeping in my bullet journal that's going to just go fully digital. So that is everything that I went through to get myself set up and ready to go into my planners for 2023. We're not going to do any type of setup inside of my task planner because that is straightforward already set up for me. But today we're going to have all the fun inside of my blank bullet journal that we're going to be using. So we'll set up those collection pages, get our cheat sheet set up as well, and then have some fun with different types of stationery to get ready for the year. So let's get started. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is customize my notebook a little bit. So inside the addition to notebook from bulletjournal.com, which you can get on that website, and you can use my discount code MENWHOBULLET10 to get 10% off of this notebook. They do have a built-in cheat sheet here for lines and spacing and things like that. However, I'm not the biggest fan of these line versions of this. Instead, as I have in my other notebooks, I'm a much bigger fan of blocks like this, so I can easily see how much space I need to do depending on my most common layouts that I do. So I created a brand new freebie that you can download to if you want to for your notebook. This will line up perfectly with the addition too. If you need to add on more, you most certainly can, but I'm not gonna put it here in the front. I wanna leave this exactly how it is. Instead, I'm going to create it here in the back. And to do that, I'm gonna make a fun one. I'm actually going to customize this a little bit. I'm gonna cut the back flap here. And when it's unfolded, that's where I'm going to put this cheat sheet. Not everyone is going to be comfortable with doing this, but I've prototyped it and I really like the way that it worked. And also, I don't ever use this back flap. So if you want, you can certainly download the freebie. You can put it inside of your notebook in the front. You can put it in a totally different one, but I'm gonna do a little surgery right now and we're gonna add it to this back flap. So to do this, what I did is I went ahead and I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade to cut out the gusset uh, across the back of that there. Now that I've cut that apart here, you're gonna see there is a little bit of a ragged edge from where I sliced it a little bit. We're gonna put some washi tape over this in just a moment. Before I do that though, I wanna get this right. So I've actually made markings on your freebie already where you need to fold this over and then you can unfold it and you're gonna cut around the outside line and then we're gonna fit it in here. And for this, I'm going to be using washi tape that I have from the washi tape shop. It's nice because it is opaque which means I'm not going to see through it and it's gonna cover up those lines really nicely. I'm gonna cut a piece for the top and then I'm also going to cut a piece here for the bottom. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and place this inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is I have some of this permanent adhesive from Tombow here and I'm gonna just lay in a piece and then I'm gonna lay it here on the crease, make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna fold that over and press it down so that it catches and it opens up. That puts it exactly where I want it. Put a few more pieces of the tape down here, lay it out flat, and then I'll do the same thing along this piece of paper here. And there I have my cheat sheet right on the inside of the folder of my notebook. And that's how we're gonna start this thing off. So a little bit of a DIY there. It's the only DIY that I'm doing on this notebook though, because the rest I really like. So now that we have that all done, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead into the rest of these pages. I'll be filling this out for myself in just a little bit, but that's where I'll put my nameplate and my phone number. We have our key that's already built in here on this side here. All of this stays the same. I don't think I have anything to add just yet. I'll fill out my intention page later on and I'll show it to you once we're all done. 
because I want to get into the rest of our notebook first. So we have the index here. Love that we have four pages for the index. We're going to skip all over those and get right into our future log here. We're going to have some fun here with some stamps and just setting this up. One of my favorite features of this notebook are all of these little tiny quick hits. Uh, at least that's what I'm calling it on the page. If you look here inside of the margin, you'll see we have two dots. What that means is that if I draw a line straight across the page here, it's going to cut my page in half. And then we have these three dots here. And if I draw a line across those, that is going to break my page into thirds really quick and easily. We have the same thing on the bottom of these pages too. We have the two dots here, which would split my page in half. And then we have our three dots here and drawing lines from there will break our page into thirds. Those lines are going to line up exactly as my cheat sheet here is. So it's going to be 12 squares down, 12 and 12. We'll create those three rows for ourselves. That's what we're going to do for this as we get up and running. So let's go ahead and just quickly draw those out. I'm going to do this with a pen actually, instead of a pencil, since the lines are already in here, I know they're the exact space that I need them to be. We'll go ahead and draw that out. Since I'm going to be starting this in January, our future log will consist of February, March, April, May, June, July, and then August, September, October. I should just go ahead and do November and December, but my A5 notebooks don't usually last me more than six to eight months. So I'm just planning ahead just a little bit, knowing that a lot of my other future dates and things I might need to know for work, those are going to be inside of my task planner. The future log inside of my bullet journal is going to be a lot more for home, content planning, extracurricular activities, things like that, and all of my work activities and things will stay inside of my task planner. I'm going to have some fun on these pages with some stamps. I usually go ahead and fill out each of the days of the week myself, but I don't want to spend the extra time on that. And the Inkblot shop has a fantastic set called Date It that has all of the calendar dates here already, so I don't need to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is use the calendar pages here on each one of the months. So I get a real quick, easy look at those. These are easy enough to change out as I need to. And then we'll go ahead and put in the dates and then we'll move along from our future log. So to do this, I need an acrylic block. I like this one because it actually has grids on it already so I can line everything up. I'm going to use the VersaFine Claire. This is a nice, cool, like dark purpley blue twilight color. Keep this whole blue dark thing going on inside of the future log as we open it up. And let's go ahead and get in our dates for February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. For this activity, I'll make it nice and easy for myself and I'll just use my date planner that I have here because it has the entire 2023 calendar for me. So on this month in February, when we're starting, it's going to start on a Wednesday. So we're going to use this one here. We'll also grab our days of the week. We'll make sure everything lines up as best as it can. In February, we only have 28 days. So what I'm going to do is actually just take a spare piece of washi that I have over here, and we are gonna cover up the 29th, 30th, and 31st. That way when we ink our stamp, those won't get inked. And then we can come over here to the side and we can place down our stamp. All of our stamps are down here. We have our February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, our extra page just in case we need it, but we are not going to go that far just yet. So let's go ahead and just fill in the dates here. We're going to keep this all very monochrome for right now as we get started. So I went in with our Sarasa clip pen here, added in my large little letters for February through July on this page, flipping over here, August through October on this page. So we're looking pretty good. I'll fill in the rest of these dates later on when I go through my calendar. For now, though, let's go ahead and make sure that we put this into our index. One of the big reasons I'm going back to this notebook is that it has all of the page numbers already in here. And I just appreciate that so much. I know it seems super silly, but uh, it's just something that I love not having to write in as we go through. So it's going to be on page eight through page 10. And that'll be our first thing here in our future log that we start to collect. And now that that is complete, we are going to start adding in some of our collection pages into our bullet journal. 
Next thing we're gonna do is set up our goals page here. So this is something that I set up in my previous journal that I really liked for myself. It helped me kind of set myself up for the year. I'm gonna be using these stencils here, these cool metal stencils that I got a while ago. And what I like about them is that they have all of these easy shapes inside of here. So if you wanna draw something like the triangles or anything else like that, you can draw them really easily on here. Most of the time at work, we have kind of like our top five goals for the year. So I'll fill those in here. I'll leave an extra space in case I have more than that, or if I wanna do any type of general journaling or any type of idea capture around them, I can do that in here. I'm just gonna grab one of my Tombow pens here. It's a nice light gray, and I'm just gonna draw just a horizontal line across here. Go ahead and take our pen. This is the Sharpie roller pen. It's just a 0.5 millimeter tip. I like it a lot. I've been using it uh, pretty far in here already for a lot of my lines and things like that. So we're just gonna write 2023 goals. Nice and easy header there for us. We'll have those spaces if we need to add them in. And once I have my goals for the year set up at work, I'll add them in here and track through them. So let's go back into our index and let's write in what that collection page is. All right, so that's gonna take care of our goals page that we have set up. Next, I'm gonna put in my help desk tracker. It's a great page that I'm gonna see all the time when I'm inside of my journal and flipping through. For my help desk planner, I've got this cool little deco rush. It's like a sticky tape similar to the double-sided tape that we used before, except it has a little computer on it. I like it, it makes sense for help desk help, right? So let's go ahead. I'm gonna put this one, probably one, two, three squares down from the top. I just pull up so I get some different colored computers there, which is kind of neat. And then let's just put in a quick help desk header here for ourselves. A good example of things that I put inside of my help desk tracker here will be if I have to order any type of hardware or equipment, I'll put the person on my team's name, I'll put the incident or request number here as well, and I'll also add the dates that I called for that. So the first date, then I have to call back to check in, I'll add that date in there as well, and that way I can just keep track of where things are, whether they're done. I usually will add a quick check mark over here, and that way when something is complete, I just X out the box and then I'm good to go. I'm gonna head back to our index. That is on page 13, and that is going to be our help desk tracker. I'm leaving some space on the side here because if I run out of that page, which I might, depending on how much stuff I have going on here, I can easily add extra pages here. Now, because it's just some quick information on that page and it's nothing that's gonna be like extra long, I'm actually gonna take my ruler and just real quickly, because I have this little center line here, go ahead and draw just the vertical line down. This way I give myself two columns over time and that way I just stop myself from just writing across the page because it's not really necessary. All right, our help desk tracker is complete. Next, we're gonna create our Instagram and our YouTube tracker. All right, this will be our page for our Instagram tracker. So for this, I'm excited because I have a cool stamp that I can use. I've been waiting to use this one for so long. So this is one that I got from Desk Gems and I can finally use it now and I'm very excited about that. So the way that I'm gonna use this on this page is I'm gonna go ahead and sit these down. They have like a little bit of like an Instagram Polaroid here. Now, when I sit this down on the page, I always do this because it's good to know about how many squares something is going to be because I'm gonna repeat this pattern across. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be eight squares across. It's a little bit smaller than that, but this wood block is eight. Now, if I go back into my cheat sheet here, you'll see that eight is going to create three columns for me as I go down. Now down my page, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, is what's going down my page. So you'll see here that I can create three by three, well, usually that would. The problem is, is that I've already used a few spaces here at the very top. So I'm not going to be able to go all the way down my page with this, with those extra spaces. But what I will be able to do, because those take up four spaces here, is I'll just have to launch them all down towards the bottom. So to make sure that I'm safe, I'm actually going to start my stamp down here at the bottom, where I'll go ahead and do that. What's cool is that I already have these grid lines down here, those little spots right here for myself as I'm going up the page. Something else I can do, just to help me out to make sure that I stay on track, is I can put a very light pencil line going down my page here. And what's great is that I can come in afterwards 
And I can erase that with a really good eraser, but at least I know that I'll be where I need to be. For this one, I'm going to be using Versafine. This is just gonna be black. I have enough blue in here already as we're going through. All right, so let's go ahead and line ourselves up on here. Give it a good press. Some stuff under here to hold me up as I'm pressing down. I'll draw over that in just a second. If anything, one thing I've definitely learned about using stamps over time is to never try to get a double press out of a stamp. It's never, never gonna work out in your favor. It's always gonna look a little bit off. Oh my goodness, and I just put that one on upside down. Let's pay attention, Mark. I'm not worried about it being upside down. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in my life, I'm just happy that, you know, I'm having fun and I'm not going to overthink it at all. Okay, for the spots <laughs> that didn't connect totally, I'm just going to come back in here with my black pen and I'm just going to draw some of these lines across here. All right, Instagram has been a bit of a struggle for me recently. <laughs> so right now, as of this moment in time, we are at 21.8 thousand. So everything from here moving forward is just gonna be in 100 increments. I mean, getting from 21.7 to 21.8 for me, that was months. It's not always fast growth over here, people. All right, nice and easy in there. I'm just penciling that in. And then what I'll do as I hit each one of these milestones, I can add the date right here at the top for myself. And then I'll probably just color this in to make it a little bit brighter and pop, do a little celebration, and then continue to move on. Before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead in here and just erase that quick little pencil line that I made here. And let's go ahead and add this into our future log. I usually have a few of those throughout the year, but you know, we'll see how we do <laughs> as we continue to grow here. All right, now over here, we're gonna have some other fun because this is where we're going to set up our YouTube tracker. So I actually really enjoy YouTube tracking. That is a space that I've definitely seen a lot of growth over this year. I still need to actually follow up on these because I actually just hit 11,000 subscribers, which is really exciting for me. Uh, so I just need to update this real quick. But this worked out pretty well for me from a standpoint of tracking through. Now, I didn't really use this section down here. I was writing down the videos that I was posting each month. Didn't really happen for me. So what I'm gonna start with is just gonna start with a new grid doing January through December. I, again, I don't think that I'm gonna make it that far inside of this bullet journal, but we'll still just track it all the way through. The way that I set this up was in increments of 200, so six to seven. And I'll do the same thing on this page here and uh, have some fun with that. So let's go ahead and set that up for us. One does need a pop of color, so we're gonna add in uh, a little bit of fun over here on the side. So for each major milestone, I'm just gonna use our mild liners here and create a big circle around each one of our numbers. I start everything in pencil first because I wanna make sure it's gonna work out. I was kinda actually figuring out the math as I was going along, don't tell anybody. And then we'll just do the same thing for each of the months. We'll go back over that with our black pen in just a second. If you're following along at home, this actually worked out perfectly. So I started it down here on probably two thirds down the pages where that dotted line is here. And I went across and skipped every other space. And that's gonna take me from January to December. And then I started down here at that third and then moved up. So I counted by twos, two, four, six, eight. And the next big number, 12, two, four, six, eight, 13, two, four, six, eight, 14, two, four, six, eight, 15. I use one of my favorite white gel pens here. This is the Uniball Signo. I love this pen so much. And actually, let's just go right over top of the letter. Just a little pop of fun. All right, YouTube tracker is done. So we'll get back over here to our future log. All right, that's on page 15. We'll save this space for some others. We'll start tracking when we get into January for this one. All right, head back here. So Instagram tracker complete, YouTube tracker done. We did our grid space cheat sheet. So the last two things that we have to do here are gonna be our lunch and learn page and our one-on-ones. We'll start with our lunch and learn page just because that's the easy one. It's also the fun one and I have some cool stamps that we can use for this. 
I've got a bunch of these little stamps here and I'm just gonna basically make them into my letters. One of the things that we do with our Lunch and Learn program is go ahead and book those Lunch and Learns every single month throughout the year. So over here, I'll put the notes and then over here, I'm gonna put the details around each one of those. So one of my favorite stamp sets, again, from Inkblot Shop, all the links for you down in the descriptions below, absolutely love this shop, is going to be this little loose leaf paper. What's so fun about this one is that it actually has 13 lines on it which is a perfect amount for this year, one for each month, and then I just have one extra down there. Oh no, a double print. We'll have to use our special eraser to get rid of that. Darn it. So my extra fancy eraser that I have here is a sand eraser from Tombow. This is great because it basically just takes off the ink that's on the paper a little bit by removing probably a little bit of the paper. Right. I'm not gonna worry about it too much on the inside of here. I'm just gonna write over it, but at least we got rid of most of the extra stamp from around there. Let me tell you, if you ever wanna feel normal about making mistakes in your bullet journals, you come to my page for that because I'm always going to make mistakes and I'm not going to rip my notebook open and start over from scratch because of it. We're just going to roll with it because my friend, that is what real life is. All right. Lunch and learns is complete. So the one-on-ones are the only thing that's left here. Now for my one-on-ones, I am mostly going to focus on my one-on-ones with my boss. And then I do have one-on-ones throughout the year with my team members. So I'm going to set up kind of uh, a few pages of these to cover them. I'll write in my names later just because I like to keep some things a little bit private. So I'm going to be using some of these fun ones here from the 365 school collection. I get these off of cute things from Japan. This was a part of their collection for fall. It's a fun one. I like it a lot. It has some of these cool little outlines um, that are on here. I could use probably a hundred different ones <laughs> for this. Now this is new. I don't know that I've actually used this one before. So we are going to be very careful when lifting that up. Look at me not making any more stamping mistakes today. <laughs> If you're the kind of person that doesn't like stamps, that's totally cool. You don't want to get into this whole world. You could easily draw that out if you wanted to. You could use a sticker. You could really use anything if you wanted to, to create these spaces here. I just like to use it because it's nice and easy. I like it because, well, it's also uh, gone along nicely with everything else that I've drawn so far uh, and used. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just put one-on-one -on -one inside of here and then I'll put the person's name next to this when I start to fill it out for each of those individuals. So that is going to cover everything that I wanted to take with me into my planner. Super exciting. All right, the last thing that we need to set up for ourselves is actually preparing for January. We have all of our collection pages to get started. Now we need to focus on actually getting ready to start using our bullet journal. Instead of doing a stamp, I'm gonna use a sticker for January. What's really cool is that sometimes you can find cool products in places you don't think. Like this is a whole sticker collection called Crafter Square, and this is from the dollar store. Like you don't have to spend a lot of money. And they also had some other really cool rub on transfers. They even sell stamps now too, which I was very excited to see. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull a J off of here for January. And then we're going to follow a pretty basic setup for our monthly. Now, what's cool is something that I learned in the Bullet Journal Basics and Beyond course at bulletjournal.com. I'll link that down for you below. Is that this monthly overview I used to think was kind of a calendar for the page. And I didn't quite understand that because I was like, well, isn't this where we put tasks? Don't we take things back to the future log and back and forth? And why am I setting up so many overview pages as I have them? But one thing that he said, which I really liked, which was that your overview page doesn't always have to be about what is going to happen, but instead what has happened. 
Let's think about that for a hot second. Instead of filling this up with dates and then going into my weeklies and filling them up again, instead using this page as a reflection point for things that have happened, almost like memory keeping. Understanding that really made me feel good and better about how I use this page because it just felt like I was doing too much. So following along with that, I'm going to set up this monthly page here for myself. I can use this to collect things if I need to about upcoming events and what's going on, or I can really use this as memory keeping and thinking about it. One of the things that I do want to start doing with my bullet journal is being intentional with that approach. And I've never been really sure on like what I want to do with this page, but I've decided this year that I'm going to use this a little bit more for reflection and being intentional with my approach. So I'm going to start splitting out these pages. Love that I have this right here and that I don't have to count to find the center of my page. And on the top here, I'm going to go ahead and just do like a quick journaling and reflecting for the beginning of the month. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to capture where I am mentally and just kind of what happened down in here. And that way it makes this whole page very much about kind of memory keeping, thinking about what's going on, reflecting on what's happened, and then setting up intentionality for the following month. This page here will be where I set up my weekly. I'm going to save this for my weekly plan with me series that I hold on Sundays. So we'll be setting this up week to week, figuring out some really cool ways to use different items, have that minimalist approach, but with that twist by adding some extra fun stamps, stickers, colors, who knows what I get into. Every single week is different and that's what I love. All right, and with that, we have set up our entire bullet journal. I have my entire forward page. I actually filled up my intentions, so I wanted to read those out loud because by doing that, you can help me be intentional and accountable for what I'm doing. So my intentions for this journal is that I want to focus on reflection and start thinking about starts and finishes, right? I want to understand my trends, what's working, what's not working, and then making changes quickly versus overthinking them. I want to get a really firm grasp on my work projects. I want to continue to educate myself on project management techniques and skills. And by using a mix of this journal and my task planner, I want to become intentional about how I plan and how I do it. I'm nervous about having two journals, but I think if I keep these in mind, I know what I'm using each thing for intentionally versus trying to overmix them. I'm going to be a lot more successful this year. We have our index over here. I need to actually add that monthly overview page real quick. I have our future log here set up. I'll be filling this out with dates and things coming up that I need to remember. 2023 goals, help desk, Instagram and YouTube trackers on these pages here. I've got my lunch and learn schedule over here. I'm excited about this one. And then I have my pages here for, for the one-on-ones. I'll be adding those titles into once we finish up today. And then I have my monthly overview here for January where I'll be capturing kind of what's happening, reflecting as the month starts, reflecting as I end the month, and then going in from there. And then we will set up our first weekly spread on Sundays with our weekly Plan With Me series. I always love doing these bullet journal setups. You know, sometimes I'm a little bit hard on myself where I'm like, Mark, they're not as cool as everyone else's, but hopefully you're here because you appreciate a relatively minimalist setup with a little bit of fun. That's how I like the plan. And hopefully you do too. And that's why you're here. We took that very minimalist kind of bullet journal method approach. We have our collection pages that we need. We're using that future log. We're using that index. And we even set ourselves up for a monthly instead of January to really get things started and then get into the rest of the weekly pages as I tend to like the plan. We didn't do a whole lot with the yearly task planner because there isn't a whole lot to do. I have to wait until January to start to set this up and use it. So that's gonna sit on the back burner for now. But we got our bullet journal together. We're gonna have some fun this year. I'm very excited for this new approach. We'll be talking about it in our weeklies. If you're interested in any of the links for any of the products that you saw today, I'll link them all for you in the descriptions below. And I even have some discount codes for you for some of the stamps, the pens, the notebooks all of that's down there. So make sure to check it out. As always, I love hanging out with you. Thanks for hanging out with me and setting up our 2023 planner together. Hopefully you got some good ideas. I'll chat with you very soon. I promise. Happy planning. See ya.